I know you guys love mini smartphones on this channel, so I decided to get this one from 2011, the Samsung Galaxy Y. As you can tell from the dry brown liquid on the package, I got this one from eBay. So in today's video, we're going to open this thing up, take a look at it, and see how much of this device is still usable in 2023. Now in 2011, Samsung had just released the Samsung Galaxy S2 with the price point between $599 and $699, depending on the model you got. In that same year, Samsung released the Samsung Galaxy Y, and it was a budget option. This device came in, I believe, just just over a hundred dollars and it was a great introductory phone for teenagers and younger people that's where the why comes from is samsung galaxy young eh? see what i'm saying at the time the mini smartphone concept was getting pretty big it was definitely a cool thing now that's kind of fizzled away to current day but yeah there was a bunch of mini smartphones that were popping up everywhere oh man this manual is nostalgic I will never open this manual. Now, I was really excited as I was unboxing this. I found it came with an SD card as well as an SD card reader. I will definitely be saving some ROMs and emulator games to this SD card, so stay tuned for that. It also comes with a micro USB charge cable. And interesting, this must be a European version of the smartphone. Huh, I had no idea. It's good stuff. Now, believe it or not, when this device was released in 2011, I did not have my first smartphone yet, even though I was turning 17 years old. At the time, I had a flip phone, and it was modular like this device. You could take the battery in and out of the device, and it was absolutely fantastic. Now I think about it, there was one drawback. If you drop the phone, the back cover and the battery would come flying out, and instead of a broken screen, you just had to gather the back cover as well as the battery, put it back together, and power the phone back on. Kind of weird to think about, right? Now that we've got the battery in, let's turn this bad boy on. Oh yes, the Samsung Galaxy Y. Oh man, the loading screen is even glitching a little bit. <laughs> Here's a quick comparison between the Unihertz Atom and the Galaxy Y. Oh, there's not that big of a size difference. They're pretty similar. Although the phone on the left is 20 times as fast and runs modern OS. You guys are gonna laugh, but I do love the unlock motion. I like how the entire screen becomes a sliding button and you can unlock it from there. So let's take a look at the phone now. Oh man, this is this is interesting. All the applications and icons on the phone are essentially a blast from the past. Even I have not seen a lot of these and I'm gonna assume a lot of you viewers have not seen this either. If not, comment below. Now, obviously one of the major drawbacks of this device is it runs Android 2.3.6 or in other words, Android gingerbread. Now, something cool with this OS is Android 2.3 was the first year that Android hid an Easter egg with their phones. Basically, when you tap the Android version, it brings it up a hidden Easter egg. This year, it was zombie art by Jack Larson. Kind of pointless, but interesting. Another thing I love about this mini smartphone is the navigation. I like the big home button, and I love the multi-window and back option. When you press multi-window, it brings up this menu here. Add, wallpaper, search, notifications, edit, settings. I like how it's all right there. Then you have the back button, which doesn't seem to be too sensitive at times, but it works. Unfortunately, you cannot log into Google or Samsung accounts on this device because Google ceased support to Android Gingerbread on September 27th, 2021. Now, yes, there are options to install custom ROMs on this device up to Android 4, I believe, but instead of going through the trouble, I found that there were some applications that still worked on the phone. And that's what I'm going to talk about now. The first one I'm going to talk about is the voice recorder. And I like it because it's got this cool microphone here. This is a test of the Samsung Galaxy Y. By the way, how do you like my radio voice? Oh, that's interesting. It only plays on the left side speaker. Let's play it back. This is a test of the Samsung Galaxy Y. By the way, how do you like my radio voice? Hey! Doesn't sound so bad other than it only records on the left side, similar to my S20 FE. Now, the next application is the Maps application, and this actually threw me off a little bit. The reason it threw me off is I had zero expectation of it being able to pull up my location, but it pulled my exact location up, and I guess, you know, I'm still connected to Wi-Fi, 
and there's still GPS capabilities on the device, but I'm blurring it out right here because it literally got my address to the point where it had the right house number. So that was pretty interesting, threw me off a bit, but I'm, I'm impressed and what are you doing here, you little kitty? Okay, now it's time to show you guys my favorite part of this mini smartphone and how I'm going to use this every day. So one of the things I really like, as I've mentioned, is it has an SD card slot. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned that this device has more RAM than it does have internal memory. 290 megabytes of RAM and 160 megabytes of internal storage, so very odd. You're definitely going to need an SD card if you're gonna do stuff like use this device as an MP3 player, which I'm about to do. It's super easy to get the SD card, and then you just pop it right into the adapter, boop, and then you get your laptop, if it's as old as mine, and you could just pop the adapter right into the laptop, boop. Here I'm just getting some of my music files, and then just like 2011, you drag and drop those files right onto the SD card. And then there you have it, you just put the SD card right back into your smartphone. Kinda weird, this is what we used to do. Now I just got Spotify or some of you got Apple Music, but it's kinda fun doing this. And this is what I'm gonna use a smartphone for, is literally an MP3 player. I got my music files on here, and I'm gonna take this to the gym, connect my Bluetooth headphones, and I could play music. Check it out. Now I'll tell you why I think this is cool, and he here's the reasons why. It's super lightweight, the battery lasts forever. I think I could keep this on for about a week at a time, and I don't need internet. It's super small, lightweight, compact. I don't need a Wi-Fi connection, and it connects to Bluetooth just fine. I think this is gonna be really cool. The navigation options are actually really similar to what we have today. You also don't need to have the music application open at all times. It can play in the background fine. And it's literally a perfect MP3 player. This is a little speaker here. So if you're using this just to play music out of the phone, it's kind of quiet. Yeah, but it's got an aux port, which is, which is more than most devices have nowadays. So... You could do Bluetooth or connect it to an aux port. I'm really excited. I just found myself a new MP3 player. So I'm gonna take it for the win. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to add, it supports expandable storage up to 32 gigabytes. So I guess there are limitations there, but 32 gigabytes of music is probably more than I listen to. Now let's talk about the best part. What games can you play on the Galaxy Y? Well, the only one I was able to get in Gingerbread that was outside of an emulator was Flappy Bird. And you know what? Flappy Bird is so nostalgic, that's all we need. Now, interestingly, there is zero lag. This game performs perfectly on the Galaxy Y. And like I said, this is all I need. I tried getting GTA 3 as well as San Andreas on here, but none of the ROMs would work. So we moved over to the emulators. So Tetris with the NES, baller. It also works perfectly if you could manage to get your fat fingers to fit on the screen and you can navigate fine. Again, no lag. Super Mario Brothers works fantastic. The only issue is my fingers are the size of chorizos and I cannot get them to fit on the screen. Now Nintendo 64 on the other hand. Yeah. The ARM V6 processor and this little guy is about to light on fire. I mean, I would absolutely love to play Super Smash Brothers on this bad boy. You could navigate okay, but once you get into the game, yeah, it's uh, it's all around bad news, and I'm not gonna put you I'm not gonna put you through any more of watching this. But then on the other hand, the Sega Genesis emulator in Mortal Kombat that works fantastic. Again, my big finger issue, but uh, yeah, it works. It works. Now let's talk about the two megapixel camera. This is the back camera, a photo it took of the Wasatch Mountains. Not so bad. Here's another photo of the same mountain range, but a little further away. And in all honesty, this doesn't look so bad. Not bad, not bad. And this is the video quality, which is absolutely atrocious. The view is beautiful right here. I'm just doing a camera test. The Wasatch Mountains are right here. Definitely not getting justice for this video because this is the entire Salt Lake Valley right here, but 
That's what you're going to get with this camera. So, that's what you guys are going to get with the Samsung Galaxy Y in 2023. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you want more videos like this, please subscribe and comment below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.